Okay, I've been meaning to do this for a long, long time, so I was waiting for better conditions and whatnot, but let me just get the info out there, you know what I'm saying? Probably won't remember this video anyway. So, a lot of these uh, Miltop computers have been surplus since uh, the Iraq war has uh, ended and Afghanistan is about to end as well. They were used for... Uh, <clears throat> troubleshooting vehicles and whatnot um, they had tech manuals and diagnostic software and whatnot on them but they in there in the innards it's a standard uh, PC so what does that mean for you well when you get one of these usually the military uh, strips them out and what I mean by that is they take the, uh, the hard drive out and the two batteries you probably won't get those you may or may not but if you're lucky you'll get the CD excuse me the DVD ROM and the uh, 3x5 floppy they'll remain in there and they figure if they take the hard drive out there's no more uh, you know sense of information and stuff in there what that means for you is you can't run this computer um, <clears throat> I'm going to shut this up right now. Um, we'll put that little thing there to hide the uh, product code for the, the the thing is Windows XP. Or, or excuse me, it might be uh, probably Windows 2000. So anyway, I'm going to shut that up just so I can move this around easier without risking damage. People want to know what this is. It's the MRE uh, D... Uh, water fire that's not the right word for it uh, anyway so the back you get the uh, you get the different com ports and stuff I can't see that good that's your VJ out so you can see you know being hooked up to a exterior monitor that's your headphone your speaker and uh, your left and right speaker I believe it is com 2 uh, got some more things. You guys can look this up. I'm not gonna. This is a video isn't about that. Okay, so this is what we're at right here. What we want right here is a USB one and USB two. Right now, I have a couple little things inserted. Let me show you. This is a 64 gigabit SAN disk. Uh, it's very small. The reason I want it small is it, so it can fit, fit in there and not get damaged. You might, I figured you might be able to close that flap too, but kind of difficult. This is a uh, USB Wi-Fi, and it's made by Panda. Now, you may be saying, well, what does that do? Well, whoa. this substitutes for the hard drive that has been removed. All right, so you're like, well, Windows won't run without a hard drive. Well, yeah, it's true, as far as I know, unless they, some boys developed a way to run off one of these. But um, what is running on here is a Puppy Linux uh, build, and I install it on this, and it functions just like a hard drive. Let me show you what happens if you try to run this thing without anything installed. <clears throat> <sighs> These weren't made for one-handed people, that's for sure. All right, so click this open. Okay, we'll we'll turn it on. And you get this message. So basically, it means there's no hard drive. Turn it off. Okay. Now we'll put in the uh, the uh, USBs. There's only two USBs, so you got to be uh, you got to be try to figure out what you want to do. So I think this is the way this was. First USB goes in the top one, which is the substitute hard drive. And the Panda Wireless goes right there, the second one down. Can you see that? 
The reason I wanted the small ones is so this flap could at least shield if not close. It's supposed to be a, a water repellent flap. And of course it doesn't quite do it, but I'm sure with some duct tape or whatever I could get it pretty 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 flush, pretty good. This video is not about that. <clears throat> so now we'll turn it on. And I hope I had those in there correctly. I forget how they were. That should have been how they were though. I may have put them the other way for ergonomic reasons. We'll find out here. So in the uh the BIOS I have it booting from yeah, it seems to be working fine. Show you the beat up, the boot up. <laughs> I have it booting from the BIOS. Uh, excuse me, I'm having the BIOS boot from the USB. Um, and I had, when I installed the puppy, um, I had the uh, option to uh, have the computer believe that the, the USB was actually a drive the generic drive um i probably should make a video about that or you can find videos about that but i'm just showing how it's possible to run one of these old mill topes even though it's been uh demilled and people might say well why don't you just order a new hard drive well i've tried to do that from uh i think it's called cdw or something like that and they don't have them in stock anymore so basically you're up the creek so this is basically the only way I know how to restore one of these into some use, usability. Um, what Puppy Linux does is it it loads its uh, program into the RAM. And I think these are 128 megabit RAM. I forget. It's been a while since I played with this. Um, anyway, uh, once it's in the RAM... Um, it's pretty fast. It just see there you go. Copying the RAM. RAM is is random access memory, as opposed to ROM read only memory. So that's uh, unique like that. It's doing its thing. Sorry about the focus issues on this. So um, this recording limit on this phone is uh, ten minutes. So I don't know how much we'll get in on this, but. <clears throat> This is probably a saved session. Yeah, it is. Because that wallpaper is, was selected by me. Um, what build a puppy is this? Oh, man. I can't remember. I, I think it's... Uh, I'll figure it out. And I'll post it on the... The description I think I guess but it's the only for it's the only program I could find that would um, well the only operating system I could find that had the ability to read DVDs and um, PDFs and then still have and audio files and things like that and still have a way to you know to you know do basic word uh, processing and the other thing too that's kind of a hard thing is restoring a Wi-Fi capability. Now, unfortunately, I don't have Wi-Fi in my house. I um I borrow it from the the library with a uh, 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 I guess you'd call it a super duper uh, Wi-Fi antenna. It's all legal. It's public and everything. So. But I don't have interior Wi-Fi. And another reason I don't have Wi-Fi is uh, all the radiation and things like that over time. Uh, not good for biologics. So anyway, trust me on this. It does have Wi-Fi capability. Um, you won't be able to see it from here. Because I don't have that function. But if I take this to, you know, like in a cafe or a college or... University or you know some place with free Wi-Fi, it's able to pick it up. So you're able to surf the net too. So basically, it takes a shell of a military surplus computer and restores it to functional status. Um, and there you go. So this video is about to end. Hopefully that explains a bit, and hopefully this video isn't as rough as it is as it is useful. <laughs> okay, I'll make part two.